What is up everyone, D me and Atu, we're back with another video and tonight we will be talking about the Tamron 28-75 f2.8 By the way, before we start, I'm shooting this video with the GoPro Hero 9 which I will be coming out with a review soon I'm just trying out all the features, 5K, 4K, 2.7K, slow-mo, ultra-wide, ultra-stabilization thing the Tamron 28-75 f2.8, it's one of the best all-around lenses I've used. But uh, I came from the Sony, I mean, I came from the Canon system. I used the 24-105, I got to use the 24-70. And the 28-75 is a great option for you if you're trying to look for something that is flexible that you can use every day you can use for street photography you can use for travel let's try to break it down i'm gonna give you pros and i'm gonna give you cons of the lens because no lens is perfect no matter how good the lens is there's always going to be flaws so first let's start with the pros of the lens so first pro of this lens is that it gives you a wide variety of focal lengths you start at 28 at its widest and the telephoto end is at 75 which can give you a lot of reach it could give you that creamy bokeh bokeh whatever you want to call it but 28 to 75 just it's it's good for all around it's good for street photography it's good for travel photography i also use it for portrait photos next is it has great build quality so it's made out of plastic but it's it doesn't feel like the cheap kind of plastic it feels very sturdy it feels very well made and yeah i have no complaint with the build quality of this lens next good thing about this lens is its low light capability so it has a constant aperture of f 2.8 which gives you a lot of flexibility in situations where you don't have enough light or you're shooting at night so it's a great combo especially with the a7 III and the in-body image stabilization in this plus this lens this doesn't have OSS, but it's a great lens to have. The 2.8 really helps out in that low light situations. Next up is the weight. So I mentioned that it is built very well, but it doesn't really add much to the weight. It's 550 grams. It's pretty light for what it can do, for what it is, 28 to 75, 2.8. It's really, really pretty light for what it is and what it can do. Next is, of course, all of those doesn't matter if it doesn't take beautiful pictures but this one has great optics the images coming out of this lens is just really really good i'm gonna show you some samples of portraits i took and other things that i took with this lens next is it that it focuses very quickly paired with the sony a7 III and the focus system of the a7 III plus this lens I didn't have any issues in terms of hunting. It focuses, the eye tracking works well with this lens, face tracking works well with this lens, and I don't have any complaints on focusing while I'm using this lens. This is just a really, really quick focusing lens. Next is, of course, affordability. This is around, a, it can go as low as $725 in Amazon, and compared to its contemporaries or the other competition for this lens, the other options for this lens like the sony g master uh, the sony g master is around two thousand dollars and the sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 is around 1100 us so in terms of affordability i think this is a great pickup for you if you're looking for something uh, relatively cheaper and or uh, something that you can use on a daily basis like the 24 to 70 something as flexible as the focal lengths of this lens compared to the other lenses available this is a great pickup great value for your money at 725 dollars all right so as i mentioned no lens is perfect what are the cons of this lens first is that 28 millimeter on the widest is it really wide enough maybe if you're shooting in a controlled environment like this like what i'm shooting on now like where i'm shooting at now 28 is okay because you can just put it further or you can just move further from the camera but if you're into vlogging vlogging type of content i think that 28 
if, especially if you have shorter arms at 28 wouldn't be wide enough for your viewers to see the whole environment because when you're doing vlogs you want to see you want people to see where you're where you're at what you're doing the environment you are in so i don't think 28 is wide enough especially when you are vlogging but for someone like me i like to shoot wide as well when i'm traveling or i'm going to places and i don't think the 28 you can just you can always step back but there's something very different about that four millimeter difference from the 24 to 70 and this 28 to 75 and next up is there is no weather ceiling so if you are living in a place where it rains a lot uh, there's no peace of mind that if you bring this out of your camera bag and start taking pictures while it's raining there's no really guarantee that it would be okay or it would still be working after that shoot because there is no weather ceiling so i live in the philippines almost half of the year there is a lot of rain here and the 28 to 75 not having that weather ceiling really just limits what i can do during the rainy seasons and or monsoon seasons yeah so so next is there are no toggle switches for the af and mf so it, it kind of takes away from your workflow if you want to shoot manual or you want to shoot automatic focus and then you're gonna have to do it in camera not having that toggle switch just takes away a little bit from your workflow and especially when you're dealing with the a7s menu system maybe it takes it, it, it just makes it harder so not having that af mf switch really is a con for this lens next for me this is i think a personal preference for everyone but the the focus ring and the zoom rings for me are in opposite places so i'm used to shooting canon because i was shooting canon before i went to the sony system but having that focus ring here and that i mean having this zoom ring at the far end of the lens and the focus ring in the inner part of the lens it still throws me off even after a few months of using it so it just gets confusing maybe it's something that i get i could get used to but yeah sometimes i'm gonna take a picture i want to zoom in a bit i accidentally just move the focus so <coughs> you could miss i'm sorry excuse me you could miss some shots with that with it being reverse but overall i think this lens is a great pickup especially for its price i wish that i could get the chance to compare it with the g master 24 to 70 but right now i'm still working on that getting the chance to really use those g master lenses trying to save up for that trying to build the business trying to build this youtube channel so i can really do that compare these lenses but this 28 to 75 is a great pickup great bang for your buck definitely great value for your money at 725 dollars it will give you versatility it will give you good low light performance it's very light it's well built so if you're looking for something an, an affordable alternative to the g master or the sigma art 24 to 70s consider picking up the tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8 i swear this this thing just takes great 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 photos great for video as well and yeah that's it for me tonight if you feel like you want to pick this up you can get it at amazon for 75 725 dollars at its cheapest some are bundled at around 7.99 you should check that out and if you feel like you get you got value from this video that you learned something for this video please consider hitting the subscribe button hit the like button and share this with your friends and that is it for me tonight peace out